For the past three years, there's been a recurring situation that my sister-in-law has been dealing with. She wanted me to address it, but she still handles it with remarkable patience despite the challenges posed by her sisters and mother. My brother, who is 13 years younger than me and now 24, recently proposed to his girlfriend after four years of dating. He wisely decided to wait until he graduated and began working with our dad at his architectural firm. His girlfriend, a registered nurse, has her own small one-bedroom apartment, while my brother still lives at home. I was fortunate to hear about their engagement just as I was starting my bi-monthly two-week break. Usually, I'm only in New York for a day or two before heading back overseas, so having two weeks in Arizona was a rare treat. After a day of catching up on sleep, my brother and I went over to his girlfriend's place to chat, maybe cook dinner, or dine out. As we reached the stairs to her apartment, we overheard an argument. My brother informed me it was his girlfriend's sister, accompanied by her two young sons, ages eight and six. This marked my first encounter with her. Here's how the conversation went, bro, it's her sister, and she's brought the kids. Me, is there a problem? Sister-in-law, yes, you have to take them. My boyfriend doesn't want them hanging around. Bro and his brother are coming over, and I can't take them. Bro, he's just getting into town. Sister-in-law, well, that's too bad. You're gonna have to take them. I can't. At that moment, she noticed us approaching. Bro, there's a problem. Me, actually, since I'm the nice guy. How about we all go to that miniature golf place? Play a round or two and then grab some pizza? Sister-in-law, are you sure? You don't have to do that. Me, yes, problem solved. Without a word of thanks, she walked off towards her boyfriend's truck, where he was serenading the area with his musical horn. I informed my brother and sister-in-law that I needed to go back home to get a bigger car, as the 2013 Chrysler 200 convertible we were in was limited in both seats and child safety. We then headed down to my car, and as I was walking around the back, her boyfriend called out to me. The sleek car smoothly pulled out from the space behind me, and with a swift departure, my sister-in-law shot me a disdainful glance, chuckling. I returned about 20 minutes later, finding my brother, sister-in-law, and the two boys eagerly awaiting. Both boys were thrilled at the prospect of some fun, especially in my vintage 2009 BMW 335 i sedan not the newest, but still impressive. After two lively rounds of miniature golf, we made our way to a local pizza joint for dinner. As we chatted, we let the kids enjoy some arcade games with the quarters we'd given them. Just as the pizza arrived, so did ES and EBF, seated at the table beside ours. The kids dashed over to their mother, who insisted they join us since their food had arrived. After placing their orders, EBF leaned over to introduce himself to my brother a gesture met with a laugh about our earlier encounter. He then turned to me, extending his hand for a shake, and something seemed to click for yes. Yes. Oh my god, you're him. She exclaimed, suddenly turning on the charm. I thought you'd be jetting off overseas or something. And don't you look fabulous. Well, actually, I have a house here. I've owned it for several years, I replied. I just don't spend too much time around. My brother chimed in, Explaining his work mostly took him across European countries but was based out of New York. Wow. You have a home here and in New York? Yes, exclaimed. Impressed. Yeah. I keep an apartment in New York. It's sort of a layover between flights and work a segments I explained. We should go out sometime. You seem to like my boys. And they could use a father figure yes suggested, her tone suddenly hopeful. Thanks, but I don't think we'd be too compatible. Besides, you're currently on a date, I replied politely, casting a glance at EBF. Yes seemed to digest this, nodding slightly while smiling at EBF, who returned the smile. Yeah, he struggled to find the right words to appease her. We've only hooked up occasionally. As the waiter brought their pizza, he began eating, his face turning slightly red with anger and embarrassment. I excused myself and headed for the restroom. Upon my return, my sister-in-law recounted the conversation that took place in my absence. Wait, you didn't tell me he was wealthy. My goodness, I could have married him. She exclaimed. But you didn't like him in school. You and mom used to make fun of him for being poor, her sister reminded her. 
Yeah, like he remembers that. Besides, you're marrying his brother. Make him date me, right? She insisted, her eyes fixed on my brother. Dude, I can't do that. Besides, he's hardly ever around. I don't think he'd have much time to spend here anyhow my brother replied. I know. No husband around probably means a nice home of my own she mused. Yeah, and still fooling around with May EBF added both of them laughing. As I returned and sat down, I sensed a tense atmosphere. The kids were eating, EBF was munching away, and ES was grinning like a possum. Before I could speak, my brother and sister-in-law abruptly stood up, announcing it was almost the kids' bedtime. As they finished, I also rose to leave, but ES's hand held my leg in place. Um, you know, EBF could take them home, and you and I could. You know, stay and chat a bit she suggested, her hand lingering on my leg. Actually, there's not enough room in his truck, and I still have to take my brother home. Maybe some other time I replied gently, gently removing her hand as I stood up to pay for our meals and theirs, perhaps being a bit too generous. After dropping off my sister-in-law and walking her to the door, my brother bid her and the kids goodnight, whispering sweet nothings into her ear. I couldn't help but chuckle. I'm a sucker for love I admitted to myself. As we walked home, my brother filled me in on the details of what went down, reminding me of our shared history with Yes from our school days when dad first started his business. Having to leave private school and selling my car to help dad raise money during a tough financial period, including downsizing to a smaller apartment after selling our home, was a challenging time. Her and her sister actually coined my nickname, Chump Change back then, along with their friends and her mother. But amidst all that, I was focused on supporting dad, completing high school, and later, college. Despite my efforts to keep my address and phone number private, she somehow found out where I lived and made my few days at home irritating. Her flirting intensified during subsequent visits, with her mother joining in both exhibiting entitled gold-digging behavior. I've learned there's a term for women like her gold prospectors, who research and insert themselves into their target's life. After my initial encounter with her, I returned to New York, immersing myself in work to keep my mind occupied. My main goal has always been to maintain a separation between my personal and professional life, though the latter still demands a great deal of attention. During my typical routine of six weeks abroad and two weeks at home, I had promising meetings with potential clients, aiming to secure contracts for the companies I represent. My income relies on securing a percentage of their contract fees, ranging from 10% for a one-year contract to up to 25% for longer-term agreements with my name attached to new works. Upon returning home, as I retrieved my luggage, I was confronted by an angry yes and her mother, a new addition to the drama. Cast of characters for this bit, me, yes entitled sister of my brother's girlfriend, and the entitled mother, bro my brother, sister-in-law my brother's girlfriend, mom and dad. Yes, just where have you been? We had to drive all the way out here to pick you up after your mother finally told us where you have been and snapped. What? None of your family would give my daughter your numbers. It's like you're trying to hide or something, yes, added. Look, I don't owe either of you an explanation of my whereabouts, I replied, picking up my briefcase and suitcase and heading towards the front for a taxi. Yes, but you're hard to get in touch with. Besides, you still owe me a date, remember? M said, grabbing my arm. Not a clue. I don't even remember asking you for one, I retorted. Well, you need to take her out. She's been telling everyone how you and her are meant to be him insisted. I'm sorry you think that, but I'm not interested right now in anything. First order of business is a day's sleep. Then, to be honest, I have a lot of things I have to do before heading off again I explained. But you just got back. Can't you even have lunch with us? Mom thought we could drive up to and have a nice meal. It's the least you can do since you left without telling us where you were going impressed. When in the hell did I need to tell them anything? I muttered to myself. Getting outside, my brother had just pulled up in his truck and hopped out to get my stuff. As I pulled my arm away from ES, I said, Look, it was nice seeing you here and your mother, but my ride is here, and I really need to catch some sleep. We drove off, leaving them actually smiling and waving as we did. Great timing, man. I just had the strangest encounter with bro, ES, and M. 
Seems like she's got her eye on you for husband number three. She and her mother have been hounding me and the folks for your numbers, where you work, where you're at, and everything. Even arguing with sister-in-law about all your details I told my brother. I wonder if I unintentionally encouraged her somehow, you know. Man, you're doing pretty well for yourself. Ever heard the term gold digger? She's already got the shovel. We joke about it and chat about other things until we get home. I bid him good night. Though it's only 4 p.m. and head inside. Dropping my stuff off on the bedroom floor. I kick off my shoes and doze off around 9 in the morning. On Tuesday, I'm awakened by the sound of mowers and trimmers. I head to shower, get dressed, and then go out to greet the guy let's call him Guy. I've been using his crew for lawn and pool maintenance since I bought the house a couple of years ago. I pay him automatically from my checking account since I've only actually seen him 10 times in the past 10 years. He's a friend from high school, a good guy. We chat for a bit, and when he mentions that his daughter and her husband are struggling to find a good car within their budget, I offer them the BMW I had. There's nothing wrong with it, but I've been wanting a larger one for more space. We agree on a price I could have asked for more, but he's a friend. And I doubt I could have gotten much more for it elsewhere. He pays me and drops me off at the dealership to buy a new one. I'm having a coffee when my mother calls and asks me to meet her at a bridal planner's place where she's having lunch. I find the place and join her, along with my dad, my brother, his fianchi, and, of course, his in-laws. Mom spots me and eagerly invites me to join them for lunch. Dad greets me warmly, and we catch up a bit. Yeah, I needed some rest as I admit, feeling the fatigue from earlier. Mom, taking hold of my arm again, beams at me. I'm so glad we're having lunch today. I was just telling everyone about your accomplishments in school and how I always knew you'd succeed. She leans her head on my shoulder affectionately, and my sister-in-law-to-be smiles warmly at me. As we leave the place, my soon-to-be sister-in-law notices a familiar car driving past the one I just sold. Who in the world is that girl driving your car? She asks, puzzled. My mom's expression darkens. How dare you? You have a girlfriend behind my daughter's back? Once again, the familiar sound of the needle scratching across a spinning album greeted me. I explained that I had sold it earlier that morning to a friend for his daughter. Still a bit stunned by the harsh comments from these two strangers, I replied, yes, I sold it. Why didn't you give it to me? I needed it as she retorted. Excusing myself, I pointed out that my car was almost new. However, she insisted, but that one is nicer than mine. She seemed genuinely upset. So, you're actually driving that old convertible now? Who would sell their nice car and drive such a cheap one? She exclaimed. Instead of responding, I simply clicked the fob in my hand unlocking the doors of the new car beside me. Their expressions changed instantly from annoyance to full-on smiles. Yes eagerly got into the passenger seat, while her mother settled into the back. This is so nice. Now I know why you wanted to get a new one. It's so roomy. My boys will love it as she remarked happily. Glancing at my dumbfounded parents, my brother grinning in disbelief, I found myself momentarily stuck. As the family followed me, we headed to a small cave. I couldn't help feeling irritated as Yes and her mother waited in the car for me to open their doors. Inside the cave, I made sure to sit between my mom and dad, despite the annoyed glances from Yes and her mother. The situation was becoming tiresome. I must confess, Yes was still very attractive, even after having two kids. However, I had already glimpsed her true nature, and lunch felt a little strained but manageable. During dessert, my dad inquired about my delayed trip and listened intently as I recounted meeting with two previous candidates and signing them both to 10-year contracts. Yeah, I would love to travel like you do, meeting all those people, going to Spain and Rome. I bet the whole area is so beautiful she remarked. Well, it is beautiful there. And the weather was perfect I replied, puzzled. Wait, how did you know I was in both Spain and Rome? Oh, a little bird told us she said smiling. Okay, allow me to state here that there are four quotes that totally annoy me, a little bird told me as I heard it through the grapevine like the song, though I promise not to tell, and I have my ways I grumbled. I didn't even tell my folks where I was headed to. It's not important. Smiling at her mother and taking a bite, 
She continued, besides, look at all that money you made. I stood up, now irritated. I don't know where you heard about my personal life, but I don't like it. I don't want busybodies snooping around my life and finances. My daughter is not a busy sister-in-law, her mother interjected softly, keeping her eyes down, clearly embarrassed. Glaring at them both for a few seconds, I pulled out a few bills from my wallet, dropped them on the table, and walked out telling mom and dad I'd call them later. As I drove off, I couldn't shake off the annoyance. Why do you butt into someone's life like that? How rude. My sister-in-law exclaimed. Yeah, just leaving me here her mother added. You need to teach your son some manners, she scolded my mom. As they left, her mother turned to my brother, saying, I hope you're not like that. Time to find a new bank. A restraining order would be nice, but at the same time, the ES and family probably would keep harassing you using other people. A lawsuit would probably be the solution. You do have a legal case. Somebody gave out his personal information without your consent and then used it against him. However, I know this would be a bad move, seeing that your brother probably wouldn't ever forgive you for that. Yes was still a very attractive woman, and despite having two kids, she was in great shape, but I had already glimpsed her true self. This is an ideal example of what I call the 15-minute rule. Of course, I think she managed to break it in zero minutes, given the first story which says a person on a 1 to 10 scale is attractive based on looks because that's all you have to go by. After that, they move up or down the scale based on personality. Sounds like she might have started at a 7 or 8 and plummeted off the bottom into negative numbers real quick. 